Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 28th of April. India will be able to produce COVID-19 testing kits by May, says Health Minister. Activists lambast Pakistan for resuming dam construction in Gilgit, Baltistan. And Bangladesh garment factories reopen as lockdown eases. And now for all the details. As India battles COVID-19, India's Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan on Tuesday said that the country will be able to produce indigenous coronavirus testing kits by May. India has reported 29,435 confirmed cases and 934 deaths so far. India's Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan reviewed the current status of COVID-19 surveillance in capital New Delhi on Tuesday. Harshwardhan interacted with senior officials through video conferencing. The health minister, earlier through video conferencing, also interacted with autonomous institutes and public sector units or PSUs under the Department of Biotechnology. He informed that 80 districts of India have reported no coronavirus cases over the last seven days. Post-meeting, the health minister said India will be able to produce indigenous coronavirus testing kits by May and production will start after getting approval from Indian Council of Medical Research. और RT-PCR की kit और इसी प्रकार से antibody test की kit ये दोनों चीजें जो है हम भारत के अंदर ही इसका production जो है करके और भारत की requirements को पूरा करने में काफी हद तक मई के महीने में सक्षम होंगे। सब चीजें एडवांस्ड स्टेज में हैं। Meanwhile, as India battles COVID-19, coronavirus cases on Tuesday soared to 29,435, with 1,543 more COVID-19 cases reported in the last 24 hours. These include 21,632 patients who are active cases. So far, the number of deaths due to coronavirus stands at 934. Pakistan on Tuesday violated ceasefire along the border in Poonch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistani troops resorted to shelling and firing of small arms in Shahapur, Kirni and Kasba sectors in Poonch. The Indian Army also retaliated to the fire from across the border. No casualties were reported till the Rats reports came in. Earlier on April 12, three civilians were killed in shelling by Pakistan in Kupwara district of Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on, Altaf Hussain, the founder of Pakistan's Mutahida Qaumi movement, has pleaded not guilty to charges of terrorism offence in the UK in connection with the speech relayed to followers in August 2016. Pakistan's Mutahida Qaumi movement or MQM founder Altaf Hussain in a virtual hearing on Monday pleaded not guilty to charges of terrorism offence in the UK in connection with a speech relayed to followers in Pakistan in August 2016. The 66-year-old self-exiled leader was previously arrested and later released on bail in October last year as part of the investigation into the speech. During the hearing via Skype, Hussain entered his not guilty plea to the single charge against him, after which the judge adjourned the case for a mentioned hearing on June 1, reports suggest. Altaf Sen's MQM, a mainstream political party of Muhajirs, has dominated Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, since the 1980s. When security forces cracked down on the party in the 1990s, Altaf Sen sought asylum in the United Kingdom. Even from exile in London, Hussein has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's policies and often blames it of using force to muzzle dissenting voices in the country. 
Activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has lambasted Pakistan over plans to resume construction work at the Diyamar Basha Dam in illegally occupied region of Gilgit Baltistan. Mirza said the move aims to encroach lands of people of Gilgit Baltistan with no real benefits to them. Political activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has lambasted Pakistan government for taking advantage of the COVID-19 situation and resuming construction work at the Diyamar Bhasha Dam in the illegally occupied region of Kilgit Baltistan. The activist raised concerns after Islamabad held a review meeting to award the contract for the dam and allied structures which is due to begin within next few weeks. Mirza said it is a move to encroach lands of Gilgit Baltistan and it will render thousands homeless with no benefits to the people of the illegally occupied region. Gilgit Baltistan ke gayur awam kisi taur bhi bhasha dam ki taameer ko qubool nahi karenge. Ek aisa dam jisse Gilgit Baltistan ke awam ko 1 megawatt bhi bijli muyassar na aayegi balki iske taam isse paida hone wali sari bijli Punjab ke karkhanon ke liye istemal ki jayegi. Activists and locals in Gilgit Baltistan have long protested against the Diyamar Bhasha Dam on River Indus by calling it an attempt to exploit the natural resources. They accuse Pakistan of aggressively pursuing construction of so-called developmental projects without any consideration of rights of indigenous people and the environment. A recent report by the United Nations has revealed that more than 500 civilians were killed in Afghanistan in the first 3 months of the year as violence raged even after the US Taliban peace agreement signed in February. More than 500 civilians were killed in Afghanistan in the first 3 months of the year as violence raged even after an agreement between the United States and the Taliban on withdrawing foreign forces. The United Nations said on Monday the UN assistance mission in Afghanistan or UNAMA in a quarterly report said in all fighting in the first 3 months caused 1293 civilian casualties of which 760 were injuries and the rest deaths including 152 children and 60 women The report expresses concern that the violence increased even after a February 29 US Taliban pact on the withdrawal of US led foreign forces in exchange for Taliban security guarantees. The agreement includes a commitment by the Taliban and the Afghan government to work towards peace. The Taliban has rejected the figures and said they had a commission for preventing civilian casualties which had brought them down to near zero. In recent days there have been several calls by the international stakeholders for a ceasefire which the Taliban has rejected. In news from Bangladesh, more than 500 garment factories in Bangladesh that supply to global brands reopened on Monday after a month long shutdown to curb the spread of coronavirus. While the country has allowed garment and other factories to reopen, much of the rest of the economy is still shut down. More than 500 garment factories in Bangladesh that supply to global brands reopened on Monday after a month-long shutdown to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Clothing manufacturers in Bangladesh's capital Dhaka and the port city of Chittagong have been permitted to resume work. Some of the world's biggest clothing firms including Gap Inc, Zara Honor in Hitax and H&M source the supplies from Bangladesh. While the country has allowed garment and other factories to reopen, much of the rest of the economy is still shut down, and the Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina told government officials on Monday that schools and colleges may have to remain closed until September if the situation did not improve. Corona pore amader karkhana ajke khullo, amader bishash er modhe je loss amader hoyeche, amra amader byabshayik partner der sathe somrito bhabe আমাদের যারা বিজনেস পার্টনার আছেন আমাদের যারা ইম্পোর্টার আছেন তাদের সবার সহযোগিতা নিয়ে আমরা আমাদের ব্যবসাকে আরো সুন্দর করে চালু করব এবং আমাদের যে শিপমেন্ট গুলো এখন আটকে আছে Meanwhile some worried garment factory workers showed discontent at the lack of health protection in their workplace and question 
why the industry had to reopen. Bangladesh is home to around 4,000 garment factories employing 4.1 million workers and industry groups for the sector had warned that the shutdown that began on March 26 could cause the country to lose 6 billion US dollars in export revenue this financial year. Bangladesh reported nearly 500 new cases of the coronavirus on Monday to take the total to 5,913, of whom 152 have died. In news from Nepal, the bodies of two Korean trackers that had been missing in an avalanche in January were found and brought to a morgue in capital Kathmandu on Monday. The bodies will be handed over to the families after necessary legal formalities are completed. The bodies of two South Korean trackers who went missing in an avalanche in January were brought to a morgue in capital Kathmandu on Monday after Nepalese locals discovered the remains several months later following the incident. Four South Korean trackers and three guides disappeared in January after being hit by a massive avalanche in Hinku village 90 miles northwest of Kathmandu. They were returning from a track to the Annapurna base camp, one of Nepal's busiest destinations for adventure tourists. Villagers spotted the two bodies of the South Korean trackers on Saturday. They were found by the side of a river after the snow melted due to the rising temperatures and later retrieved from the remote area by helicopter on Sunday, police official Rajkumar Kesi said. The bodies, one male and one female, will be handed over to the families after necessary legal formalities are completed, the official said. Mount Annapurna, the world's 10th highest mountain at 26,545 feet, is visited by thousands of foreign hikers and climbers every year. The Himalayan nation has cancelled all trekking and mountain climbing activities this year amid a nationwide lockdown to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Indian police have been trying innovative methods to keep people off the streets during the countrywide lockdown to prevent the rapid spread of coronavirus. Police in capital New Delhi on Monday turned into coronavirus zombies in a unique effort to spread awareness among the lockdown violators. Police in Indian capital New Delhi on Monday turned into coronavirus zombies in a unique effort to spread awareness among the lockdown violators. Wearing helmets shaped like the microscopic version of the deadly virus and protective suits, Volunteers of Delhi police were seen walking like zombies on the roads as police made announcements regarding precautionary measures to prevent the spread. लेकिन जैसे ये सड़क पर आते हैं, उन लोगों को समझाते हैं, रोक के समझाते हैं, तो उसका एक परमानेंट एक जो छवि है उनके दिमाग में बन जाती है कि ये वायरस निश्चित रूप से कितना खतरनाक है और इसके लिए वो सारी प्रिकॉशन जो उनको लेनी चाहिए � Indian police have been trying innovative methods to keep people off the streets during the countrywide lockdown to prevent the rapid spread of coronavirus, which has killed more than 200,000 people worldwide. Meanwhile, a red auto rickshaw with the spikes of coronavirus all over its structure, making announcements on a loudspeaker mountain on it, is catching eyeballs across southern India. The coronavirus auto is creating awareness on Chennai roads against littering and spitting and its unintentional effect on coronavirus spread. Creator of the coronavirus auto, Gotham said, people often throw plastic bottles after the use on roads and this leads to spread of the disease. He used 165 bottles to make the spikes on the auto and then colored them to look like the deadly virus. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India will be able to produce COVID-19 testing kits by May, says Health Minister. Activist Lembats Pakistan for resuming dam construction in Gilgit, Baltistan. And Bangladesh garment factories reopen as lockdown eases. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline 
and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.